In this video, I show you why scaphoid fractures are susceptible to non-union and how you can assess the vitality of the proximal scaphoid fragment. The first thing you need to know is how the scaphoid bone is actually vascularized. There is this small branch of the radial artery that enters the scaphoid bone from the dorsal aspect and supplies the scaphoid in a distal to proximal fashion. There is a second branch that mostly supplies the distal pole shown here. And now, when you have a fracture here, you can easily understand that the blood supply is cut off and this puts the scaphoid bone at risk for avascular necrosis. Here are the locations of scaphoid fractures. Up to 80% of fractures affect the middle third of the bone, 10 to 20% of the fractures are located in the proximal pole and only 5% are located in the distal pole. Another thing you need to consider is that the scaphoid bone is more or less completely covered in cartilage, so you don't have a periost and therefore you cannot rely, or the scaphoid bone rather, cannot rely on periostal callus formation. Fractures in the middle third have a 30% chance of non-union and necrosis. If the fracture is located far proximal, then basically always you end up with critical blood supply and subsequent necrosis. These are the classical teaching MR parameters to assess the vitality of the scaphoid bone. A vital fragment is supposedly T1 hyperintense with bone marrow edema and enhancement. On the other hand, a necrotic fragment is supposed to be T1 hypointense without edema or enhancement. However, let's have a look at this study from Bulgarist University Hospital by Donati, published in Radiology in 2011. There were 28 patients with scaphoid fractures and all these patients underwent surgery and during surgery the surgeon performed a puncture bleeding test to assess the vitality of the proximal fragment and this puncture bleeding test basically is the reference standard. On this table you can see the corresponding MR parameters. And if you look here, the vital fragments were T1 hypointense in 87% of the cases. So that's already a little bit strange. When we look at the bone marrow edema and enhancement, both were present in 87%, which is okay. We understand, makes sense, everything good so far. However, if you look at the necrotic fragments, first, all of them were T1 hypointense. So that's still matching our previous thoughts. So far so good, but now look at this. Bone marrow edema was present in 77% of cases and enhancement of these dead fragments was present in 62%. In order to understand this, we need to ask ourselves what these imaging parameters or signal changes actually mean. T1 hypointensity is non-specific and it can be that the bone is simply sclerotic and dead but it can also be that there is mature callus formation, endosteal callus formation, as a part of the natural healing process when the callus starts to calcify. Bone marrow edema might be immature callus before it calcifies, and in that bone it may reflect bone marrow fibrosis, still bright on fluid sensitive sequences, but actually dead. As for the enhancement, there is some debate going on in the literature. Some speculate that the dead scaphoid bone fragments may enhance because there is some kind of a retrograde ingrowth of inflammatory tissue through the fracture into the bone, but to me it sounds a little bit far-fetched. Now to make things easy and resolve all this confusing stuff that I have shown you so far, you need to know what the reference standard is and how it actually works. So the surgeons, they open up the wrist and they look at the bone then they take a, a long needle and with the strong arm by the way who gets this reference please comment below if the long needle and strong arm puts the needle into the bone into the proximal fragment and then pulls it back then he releases the tunicate and if there is bleeding from the puncture site the bone is considered vital if there is no bleeding the bone is considered dead Sometimes on MR imaging you see actually some patchy enhancement and therefore the reference standard may actually be biased. If the surgeon hits the necrotic part of the fragment as shown in this image, it's actually not bleeding, but if he hits the vital part, it would actually bleed and change the diagnosis of the vitality of the fragment. So be accurate in your descriptions, 
always describe areas with and without enhancement and to make things easy and to sum it up if it's enhancing it's alive so i hope you learned something from this video and if you like this content make sure to subscribe to my channel and also hit that like button see you next time